Welcome to 10 Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. I'm Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. This show features questions from the Personality Hacker community that we answer in about 10 minutes. We've been using personality types in our coaching for years, and we'd love to answer your questions about personal growth through the lens of type. You can find out more about us at personalityhacker.com. Okay, now let's hear today's question. Hi, Joel. Hi, Antonia. My name is Brooke. I am from Florida, and I believe that I am an INFJ. My question is, can you please explain the difference between being introverted and just being insecure? Because I have a burning desire to talk to people, but I'm also equally afraid of them, and I will outright avoid them. But when we do talk, I really enjoy conversating. So I'd like to know, am I truly an introvert, or am I just insecure? Uh, So that's my question. Thank you so much for everything you both do for the MBTI community. Um, And that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Brooke, for the question. I'm going to throw one more in there. You you know, you you said, what's the difference between being introverted or being insecure? I'll throw in the question or shy, like just being shy. I think there's been times in my life as extroverted as I am, I have ENFP preferences. I think I've just been shy. I don't know if I would maybe insecurity, but it's just a little bit of uncertainty. Like I just didn't know how... I didn't know what I didn't know. And I think shyness also is a factor here too that we don't necessarily speak about like all the time. Yeah, I uh, I was just about to say, I would love to see you shy. There's no way you've ever been shy. And then I'm like, oh, you were shy around me when we first That's met. That's right. You 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 were you even thought I was introverted because I was so shy. I suspected you were, but you were just being shy. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. And that wasn't, I don't think I was insecure. I, I wasn't feeling insecure when you met me and I wasn't feeling, uh, clearly I'm not introverted. <laughs> Um, (laughs) I don't think anyone's accused me of that until the situation with, you know, when you and I met, I was shy because I was, I was redefining things for myself. I was, it was uncertainty that was causing it. I was in an input mode. I was, I was soaking a lot in I was trying to figure out a new way of being. I'd burned my life to the ground ostensibly and, or not ostensibly, metaphorically. And I was trying to find, okay, what's next? And so I was a little bit like, don't do a lot right now. Just listen and just be in input mode. And that came off to people as very introverted at the time. Yeah. Very short time. Short, <laughs> it didn't uh, last very long. It didn't last long, but yeah, there was there was a time. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So this idea of in, am, I, am I introverted or am I insecure? Like, yeah. How do, I, how do I think about this? So I'm going to take Brooke's question specifically because I think there was something, there's almost a, uh, I am inferring a, uh, an assumption which is Brooke mentioned that when she talks to people, she really enjoys it, but she avoids it until that moment. And she's like, am I really an introvert? So I'm going to clarify that all humans enjoy interacting with humans. Now, it might be the kind of human you're interacting with, right? Like there might be the style of conversation. There's certain kinds of conversations you really enjoy and other conversations you don't. But it's just a human thing to like other humans. I like other humans. I like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not an other human. That's <laughs> Well, it is inside of me, Antonio. I got a lot of personalities in here. Fair enough. So, uh, I like the movie Split. That's right. So um, now that said, there are some people who say that they hate all humans, but it's kind of one of those things that like a cynic is just a, a wounded optimist or whatever, right? Like a pessimist or whatever. Like basically people who are cynical, it's because they've been wounded by people, not because they hate people. So enjoying conversation, that doesn't necessarily make you extroverted. It just means that you're enjoying a conversation. So uh, if you feel shy or if you feel insecure... Uh, most of the time I put insecurity down to a sense of uncertainty. That's really what insecurity is. It's uncertainty. You're not sure how this is going to go down. And if a person has INFJ preferences, sometimes it is hard for them to predict how they're going to feel, how other people are going to show up. And if you are over-relying on your dominant or driver function of introverted intuition or perspectives, I have noticed some INJs, both INTJs and INFJs, keep themselves from experiences because they don't, they can't predict how the, the experience is going to roll out. And until they can predict it, they don't want to put themselves in the situation. This is an over-reliance, by the way, on introverted intuition or perspectives and an underutilization of the other side 
the three-year-old or inferior, of extroverted sensing or sensation. Extroverted sensing or sensation is the function that encourages us to seek experiences, not to be able to predict them, but just to be able to have them, just to be able to experience them and have the moment, whether it turned out good or bad. So for INJs, one of the best gifts you can give yourself is to integrate the other side, is to bring that courage the willingness to put yourself in unpredictable situations just so that you can have an experience, just so that you can have lived through it and learned about yourself and learned more about life. And and as a bonus, to be able to bring more information into your intuition so the next time you you might be able to predict it. You might be a little bit more comfortable about what's coming up. Now, the other piece is that if you have uh, INFJ preferences, then extroverted feeling or harmony will be your co-pilot um, or your auxiliary function. This is the function that has you enjoying, has everybody, and anytime we're pulling on that function, enjoying being in rapport with another person. We enjoy the feeling of connectedness. We enjoy the energetic interchange that happens when we're in, um, you know, in a rapport with another human being. So whether or not you're an introvert or an extrovert, if you have NFJ preferences, you're going to enjoy the experience of being in a rapport with another person. You're going to like it. Now, the challenge is that this is the function that Dr. John Beebe would say has the archetypal energy of a parent. So oftentimes, IFJs that avoid interactions with other people isn't because they don't like people. It's because there's a mechanism that shows up in them that makes them feel responsible for other people. Yes. And it's actually that feeling of responsibility. Am I responsible to listen to this other person and all of their life problems if they start dumping on me? Am I responsible for the emotion this person is experiencing? Am I responsible for getting their needs met? Right. There's a sense of responsibility that comes up with other people. And that usually for IFJs is the thing that they're trying to distance themselves from. Well, and if you invite somebody in your house and they're thirsty, most people would assume that it is our responsibility to offer them water. It's my domain in my house. And so I'm going to offer this person water if they're thirsty because they're, they're on my turf. And I think for an INFJ using harmony, when you're in a conversation, the question is, are we in my house? Are we, are they in my domain? Do, am I responsible to get them water, you know, metaphorically, or is this their responsibility to do that? And so the, the question then is, where does, where's the boundary line? When are they in my territory and I'm responsible for them? And when are they sovereign and in their territory? And we're just federating. We're just talking across the fence as neighbors. And they're 100% responsible for their needs and their situation going on. And I know where that boundary line is. And INFJs that do the work to understand where those boundary lines are, just like if you were to invite someone to your house, that's a clear boundary line. You invited them to the front door. They're sitting on your couch in your living room or your sofa clearly it's my responsibility to get them a drink. They don't know how to go get a drink in my house. I guess they could go take action there, but it'd be rude to do so. I need to be the one to offer them that drink. So getting really clear, that's a that's a physical example of what needs to happen conversationally with other people for an INFJ is to determine, okay, when are they in my house and when aren't they? Yeah, well, and that's another thing that extroverted sensing or sensation can come through for an INFJ on is, uh, are, am I responsible for this person or are we just having an experience together? Yes. And if you can bring in that aspect of, I'm just having an experience. I don't have to predict it. I don't have to be responsible for it. I just have to live it. Then you can let a little bit of that I'm responsible feeling go. I think that's a perfect metaphor, by the way, Joel, is this, or not just metaphor, but way a reframe of seeing it. If they're in my home, I'm responsible, but I'm out and about. Is this my domain? Yeah. So I think that's a great way of seeing it. And you might choose that it is. Like you might, but you need to be the one to decide that. You you shouldn't just mindlessly, I mean, that's my opinion. Again, you, you as an INFJ, anybody gets to live their life however they want. I just think that people that use harmony, if they do a little bit more thinking around, okay, where where do these borders live? Where do these boundaries live? Where does my sovereignty as a, as a person, as an INFJ in life, where, where do I end and another person begins? And I'm totally, most INFJs are wel- welcoming people into their lives and into their experience and are totally cool helping meet needs. But it's good to know that you've chosen that. It didn't just happen to you. And I think that pushed, that makes the, I think an INFJ then feel a little bit more confident as they go through the world. They will speak up more. They will engage with people because they know that they're not responsible when they do. Yeah. This is not my child. So I can, I can enjoy them as an adult. I don't have to like bring them into my 
you know, I don't have to bring them into my like, I don't have to tether myself to them as like, oh, they don't feel good now. Now I have to do something about that. So I think that's a great way of seeing that. So we just used the type as an example of this. But the foundational question was, how do you know if you're an introvert or insecure? And the answer is there are insecure extroverts out there. Um, or not just insecure extroverts, but extroverts that don't particularly like people and will avoid them. Now, I think it's because they've been burned. Again, I think humans like humans, right? We're pre pre-wired to like each other. But if a person has been burned as an extrovert, they might um, they might be more reticent to engage with other people. And there are introverts out there who have figured out this boundary thing, or they figured out how to navigate the world without feeling responsible for it. And they might appear quite extroverted because they seek opportunities to engage and interact with people. So what's the actual difference? Well, the actual difference is that if you lead with an introverted function, then you need to spend considerable time in that function in order to feel like a complete person, whether that's your intuition, your thinking, your feeling, or your sensing. That's how you know you're an introvert, is that that is the dominant function and that is the one thing that you need to be doing in order to feel complete. And if you have extroverted preferences, then that dominant or driver function is an extroverted function and you need to be doing whatever that function is in order to feel complete. So it's really more about which function is taking precedence for you. What is the what is the highest order, the highest value for you? What is your go-to tool in your toolbox? What is the thing you do even when you're lacking resource? That's how you figure out whether or not you're an introvert. And insecurity, it comes through all si shapes and sizes. And just try to, to try not to associate introversion or extroversion specifically with whether or not you like people. And it makes it a little easier to determine. I also just want to make one, it, this is a little bit more advanced, but I just want to make this comment here. So in our personality life path mentorship, it's an eight week program. We look at all the eight functions. We talk a lot about shadow functions and the shadow in our personality. We don't typically talk about on the podcast or Tim and Type Advice too often. Every once in a while, we'll dip there. But the, but the payment to the shadow is making peace with uncertainty. And so earlier you said, anytime you're feeling uncertain, you're definitely going to be feeling insecure. I don't know if that's always true. I think you can feel in, uncertain and not feel insecure. You can still move forward with something in the midst of uncertainty. And you go, look, I don't, I'm not totally certain about this, but I'm I'm securely going to move toward this anyway, even though I don't feel certain. I don't think it always comes with uncertainty. That's why I added the idea of shyness in at the beginning, because I think shyness is a little different than insecurity. Well, this might be a quibble, but I don't think you have to feel insecure as a person. I think uncertainty and insecurity are basically the same about a thing. Yes, so that's, you, that's the point I'm trying to make. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, you might not feel insecure as a person and insecure in who you Thank are. Thank you. Thank you for the distinction. But you feel insecure in this action. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is the pathway to growth for for many of us, in fact, all of us, is going to be making peace with uncertainty and doing it anyway. And so we can't necessarily always use that as a good measurement. And And I just wanted to make sure that was clear because because we want to be consistent with, with the advice we give in our coaching, our mentorships, because I think this, is, this matters. Yeah, good distinction. Thank you, Brooke, for the question. You can ask your own question about personality types or personal growth. Visit personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. We also have programs designed to help you with your personal growth through the lens of personality types. Again, visit personalityhacker.com and find the program that's made just for you. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. Thank you for listening to 10 Minute Type Advice by Personality Hacker. We'll talk with you on the next episode. Hey, it's Joel from Personality Hacker. So a big reason people get into personality types is usually to improve their relationships with other people. And you can understand key differences between you and someone else when you understand how type works. So clearly, personality type is applied to relationships. But what about the relationship with yourself? Well, personality type can also help you navigate your career or maybe an educational path that you need to follow or other opportunities that present themselves and it helps you know which are the right choice for you. And ultimately, personality is the key to unlocking identity level worldview and life purpose. It all starts with getting the owner's manual for your personality type. In this owner's manual, we cover the basics of your personality. And then we dive a layer deeper to connect your personality to your relationships, your career, your worldview and identity. Because we believe it's your life and it should be designed for your personality. So start your owner's manual journey at personalityhacker.com. 
When you access your owner's manual, I recommend focusing on the ideal day exercise first. Because when you start crafting your ideal day, you're being mindful about the type of lifestyle that you want. So designing a life around how you're naturally wired makes sense and you can finally stop fighting yourself. So come discover and develop your unique personality at personalityhacker.com.